Welcome to the Marvel Cinematic University Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Canton III, and this is a special episode as we are nearing the five-year anniversary of Avengers Endgame. And obviously, it's the biggest movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the second uh, highest grossing uh, movie of all time. Uh, Was it Avatar? Avatar The Way of Water just beat it last year. A movie with no cultural impact is what the people tell me. (laughs) (laughs) And that and that and that those are the lovely stylings of the super producer, Jake Christie. Jake, how are you? I apologize for butting you before my intro. I just had to dunk again on the people who said that stupid thing. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, of course. And we also have a special guest with us, friend of the show. Rod, aka the black guy who tips. Rod, how you doing, bro? Good to have you. Hey, back. what's going on, man? I'm a little embarrassed. This is an uh, egg on my face. I thought we were going to review uh, the 2006 Endgame, uh, directed by Andy mm. Ching, starring uh, Cuba Gooden Jr. and James Woods. So it's going to be a weird. It's going to be a weird review, guys. <laughs> I, let me see. I might need to watch this just because. <laughs> just because. I mean, because I have no standards. A Secret oh, oh. Service agent investigates the conspiracy behind the murder of the president is the, the, the tagline. Oh, it's got a poster where you can tell that James Woods did not post for it. That they just, like, photoshopped him on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I did watch the right movie, I think. So. <laughs> okay, good That's great. That is great to hear. And, yes, Avengers Endgame... I've been thinking about this movie a lot over the past couple of weeks, especially with the way that everything has transitioned in the Marvel Cinematic Universe over the past five years and how things have changed, evolved in some ways. And let's just start with this simple question. How are we feeling five years later about this movie? I will start with our guest, Rod. What you what you got? Oh, man, I just watched just finished watching it right before we got on uh, again. Um, And I, I mean. I hate to sound ridiculous, and I know it's, it's going to sound over the top, but I think it's the greatest cinematic undertaking of all time to to make this movie that brought all this shit together. It's honestly a love letter to movies, but it just, for people, I think for some folks, it just, they don't think of it that way. They think of it as like, oh, it's the comic books, and they all brought it. It's like, no, you have mm-hmm. to go back to the beginning. You have to go back to like... No one had done this before. These were their leftover characters that companies didn't want. You know, the studios didn't see movie futures for these guys. Um, And they built something out of uh, scraps over there at Marvel and turned it into a a powerhouse that uh, from the second you hear on your left cap, I I, I get goosebumps and chills to this day for like the next 30 minutes of of when I'm watching it. So uh, yeah, I just think, you know, being a kid that grew up looking at these colors on pages you know and these comic book bubbles this i this is like a dream that i never thought would come true and so i still feel that gratefulness when i watch this movie and just like thank god kevin feige was there to to share the still uh steer the ship and get us something uh that good that's 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 a beautiful Mm -hmm. thing and and jake how about you sir i think for one it's still a really fun movie to watch i think that there's a lot of people, I think, even in like our Discord and in our orbit who, you know, will say things like, you know, it doesn't really work as a movie, yada, yada, yada. And like, that is the thing I intellectually can understand. But as I'm watching it, it is such an enjoyable time because it's like, it is so, like, it's really long, but it's, it's just so, it's, it has so many interesting ideas that it executes them almost into almost each of one of them pretty well and uh, well enough where like you're just like oh this is the bit where they do this cool thing this is the bit where they do this cool thing this is the bit where they do this cool thing and from a macro level one of the few times I've ever been prophetic ever and this like I I looked up the date I sent this from the movie theater after watching an Avengers End Game on Twitter I tweeted. In 30 years, when every film is part of an extended universe, only then will we appreciate the monumental feat that the Russo brothers accomplished with Infinity War and Endgame. It didn't take 30 years. Now, you know, just five years later, when every film, like, how many cinematic universe attempts have tried and failed, and, like, the DCEU's gone, all these different, they're, they're trying so much different interconnected yada, 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 and none of it has worked. Not none of it, but most of it has not worked. And whenever people try to do uh, endgame type moments, big things like, it doesn't work. 
And I think that the, the feat of Endgame, I think, is the most remarkable. On, when we're talking about Endgame itself, not the whole Infinity Saga, because that, you know, you can chalk up to Kevin Feige, is that it really doesn't feel like... It's easy to forget just how many characters are in the movie, and it balances them so well, and Infinity War as well. Like, it just... it. it it is so propulsive and so interesting and has so many, you know, fun moments with all these characters where you're like, holy shit, this actually is a culmination. It is not a culmination name only. It's like, if I were to build what the culmination of the first, you know, phases of the MCU would be, yeah, and f- uh, if any war in game is basically it, that's basically exactly what I would want. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. As somebody who attended WrestleMania this past weekend and thinking about how wrestling builds to that event as its own culmination and then just when you think it's over it continues Endgame is so interesting to look at from that aspect because of everything that comes after and the way that we now compare what happens now to what that was and I think to just put that in perspective the MCU is doing pretty damn good when you can have stuff where people have, and we've gone about this over the past year or two, talking about what's been really bad and what hasn't worked out. And it's because of what it's in comparison to. And what it's in comparison to is really to what Rod said was the greatest cinematic achievement, perhaps. And this idea, comic book movies should not have been this successful. It really is a hell of an achievement. If you really just to think about that by itself, um, from a technicality standpoint, from a logistic standpoint, they shot the Infinity War and Endgame back to back. All these actors shuffling them in and out, all these scenes, putting everything together. And the fact that it looked good and it made sense, both the stories coalesced. It just felt like it felt good. It was a part one and a part two, and it and all of it just completely fit. It fit. And I think the fit part of it, when you watch Endgame and getting that, it's our it's our Return of the Jedi. It, it really is. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think that part of it, just to think about it in from a historical context, is really cool to think about. And so whenever I watch this movie, I think about all of the moments that we had built up to over the 10 years prior to 2019. I mean, and to get on a deeper level, it just makes me think about how I've grown up with the MCU. When the MCU started, I was 21 years old. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, to think how... You you grew up with the MCU. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I was 12 when the MCU started. (laughs) So, like, in just big chunks of our lives have been... Uh, you know, going on with you know in conjunction with this with this uh, MCU and and that's where when you watch Endgame, I think about it like this was ten. This movie came out ten days after my first son was born. Mm-hmm. So just like you think about like all of the this and the time that passes by as you as you think about those moments and and Tony and Cap getting getting back in good standing with each other. Um, Thor figuring out his it, it, figuring out all of his confidence issues from what happened in Infinity War. There's just so many moments that which we'll go through again, but it just to me when I think about the MCU as an entirety, like regardless of how this ends, you can never take away how great this truly was, and that's really where it lives. It, it lives and dies with me. But go ahead, Rob. No, I'll, I'll just agree with you. Yeah, is this was like if this is the peak, that's a good peak. Like, like we, you know, like it's kind of our fault as as fans and just people that you know are inundated with content that we just are like, we need ten all the time, every time, forever, from me at this point on. And and so the the quote unquote letdown of the MCU, I'd say over the last like five years, has mostly been nothing's ever getting to that peak again. Um, mm-hmm. I was just going to say real quick, also, um, uh, just nuclear hot takes, right? If Corn Puzzle's listening to this, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, okay? I know I'm offending some people, but you also <laughs> had this collection of talent with, like, a legit... 
I'd say 50 to 75% of these actors giving some of their best acting performances, like in tights, yeah. talking to tennis balls, you know, like, like mm. <laughs> giving you layers and depth and, and, and it's yeah. been long enough now that I feel comfortable saying like the ones that left and kind of tried to move on or kind of, you know, how Holly, Hollywood kind of had this like downplaying this, like this weird peer anti Disney peer pressure of like, Oh, you make those movies. But like, Everyone's had a chance to go make their independent films. Everyone's had a chance to make their spinoff films, their their own version of their action films. I see that look on you Jake's can, face right you now. You can just say Chris Evans. You can just say Chris <laughs> Evans. I'm sorry. Because, like, Robert Downey Jr. won a fucking Oscar. Like, he's clearly doing good work still. But, like, Chris Evans, he's blown it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I think it's more more than him. But, yes. like I know. But, yeah. There's several people that are just, it's like, like, Zoe Saldana, you're not making another one of these you know what i'm saying like this like and she's an yeah. avatar but you know what i mean she ain't yeah. the role isn't one where we're gonna be like i think of gamora i think of you you know what i'm saying and i think yeah. um it's 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 lightning in a bottle you know it's like watching like yeah. the celtics or something where you're just like damn mm-hmm. every dude's playing mm-hmm. great not this celtics the old celtics like bird it's like every <laughs> dude on the team is playing great like how do you how do you top this uh it's the miami heat you know like and i i mm-hmm. love that I'm glad you guys asked me to to be on here just so I could rewatch it and 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 have these thoughts of like, oh man, this was magic. You just don't catch this twice. Yeah. We're, we're never getting mm-hmm. this from another company. We're never getting this from this company yeah. again. Is this was the peak, and and that, this is a great peak mm-hmm. to go out on. Yeah, I think it's like seven Oscar winners or whatever in in Endgame. Like it, it just it th- there never will be a movie I don't think with as much talent acting wise and even though it is silly stuff it is talking to tennis balls or in you know green screen sets i think that you can just tell that they're they clearly are just there's a way that they're invigorated by being around such other good talent like i don't even think it's like oh they're taking it super seriously i think it's just like oh the we're on, i'm on a set with some of those charismatic people alive i have to hold my own you know what i mean like it's a lot easier for Chris Evans to bring his A game and to really try his hardest when he's, you know, going up against Robert Downey Jr. than if he is, you know, it's, uh, I, mean, I don't want to, it's, it's Kobe, I don't want to say Anna Darmist, but it's you know, Kobe that's what, that's on, I uh, remember the Redeem team? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait. Robert yeah. Downey Jr. is Kobe and he's mm-hmm. full court pressing mm-hmm. all, every possession. And then that means you can't be, you know, like Joe Johnson or Vince Carter and be like, well, I'm above this. You can't be above it. He, If the greatest guy involved is not above it, you can't. So, yes, Chris Hemsworth is crying to a rocket raccoon tennis mm-hmm. ball mm-hmm. about his mom dying. And I'm believing it. I'm tearing up yeah. watching this, this dude with a beer gut, like, do this thing. And it's like mm-hmm. that kind of magic is not going to be captured by and Jason Momoa is never going to do that as Aquaman. Like no. th- this is just, no, no, this was a time it happened and we're never getting it back. But man, I'm so thankful. I, we I, got it. I think that that highlights this. What makes the MCU? I think, I think I've said it before and I, Rod, I think you, I don't know if you've been on a pod when I've said it. Cause it's one of the phrases I say over and over again is Kevin Feige's, his greatest talent is not like the planning. It's not the storytelling. It's casting that that's, that's the, that's what makes the MCU magical. Like if you compare it to the DCU, put to put it simply, the MCU would never give a major character to an actor as bad as Jason Momoa. That like, not uh, Jason Momoa is a fine actor, but right. he just is not, he does not have the, I mean, watch Aquaman two. That movie would right. be so much better. If someone not named Jason Momoa was the lead actor. Yeah. yeah. It's not a stunt, it's yeah. No, there's no stunt casting in the MCU. Like there's no. no like, Oh, this guy's bigger than the part. So let's get him to do it. It's like, no, no, no. the part gotta be, you gotta fold into this shit. Cause this is a, this is a machine. Yeah. yeah. And I think that the, the end game is for the moment. The one of the few times in the history of movies where contracts and like money was not really an object. It's like if the character we have, which is played by an A list actor, only is going to be in one scene of the script, we can get them because this is fucking Avengers Endgame. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we can get Rene Russo to show up for one scene if we're going to have this emotional moment. You know what I mean? That scene is, I think, probably one of the most emotionally affecting scenes in the MCU. And it's like a character that honestly most people forgot about, died in a movie most people didn't see. But we're like, no, we're going to get Rene fucking Russo, you know, who's mm-hmm. overqualified for this, but she also is like a great actress. 
You know, yeah. she's not some B list person from a TV show that they wanted. And we have this great scene. And in most movies, you can't do that because you can't bring in Rene Russo just for one scene because she's in it. But like, the, Disney correctly was like, let's spend 400 fucking million dollars on this and we'll make the second biggest movie of all time. And, you know, you're acting. Rene Russo oh, you ahead, in a movie yeah. that a lot of people who did see it hated. Like, this, this mm. movie was so well done, it retconned movies we hated into important oh, yeah. movies that matter to the characters, which makes it matter to us. That that That's the mm-hmm. biggest power move of this whole thing, is that you're now, like, people are now being like, well, was Thor 2 really, was that that bad? And I'm, like, I'm in the theater, like, yeah, he did lose his mama, but I remember being in Thor 2, mm-hmm. like, bullshit, ready to leave, when is this gonna be? Yeah. Like, they did that. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's something to be said for the symmetry of all of the Easter eggs, the closing of stories that we see throughout. I mean, I'll get to that in a little bit, but I mean, to the acting point that you guys both laid out, the Robert Downey Jr. casting, I mean, it can't be said enough of how without that, none of this happens. And none of this looks the way it looks. None of this is as effective as it is. And I just think of his performance in Endgame and kind of like the way that he... He starts in almost this this very lost, like you know, he lost Peter, and he's he's with Nebula, and you know, he's trying to he's trying to be kind in a sense, but also like he's kind of losing his mind a little bit. Can't starve starvation, all of these things happening, and I think Downey just he, you know he just does it in a way, and I think there's this little there's this little piece of me that always thinks about, um, especially when it comes to fathers and sons the fact that he got to have a conversation with his dad and how a scene like that, you would think it's like, Oh, it's just a throwaway scene. It's just something to get to something, but no, him talking about time and, 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 you know, not having the amount of time and being, you know, just being present in the moment and being appreciative of the time that you have, knowing that it's not always going to be like that was something that really always hits home. That conversation always hits home uh, with me. And it's almost like you could see, and you know, and watching it, you get a little sad knowing that the that the outcome is going to be this. But at the same time, it's just such a perfect way to tell a to tell a story, and especially Iron Man story from the way that it started. And just as I think of all of these characters, especially in the main ones, and the way that this movie starts coming off of Endgame, when we talk about performances in Robert Downey Jr.'s performance, I think the way that he rips into uh, cap at the beginning of that movie is just like some special stuff is it's just the way that he calls him a liar it's just like wow and then just collapses just and, the, just and then they stuff. they clearly use the cgi from when uh from when uh captain america was was like a 95 pound guy on tony's chest because yeah. so, tony looks so small and he's yeah. just so angry. He get and he looks so frail. He gets up and he's like in his chest and rips off the arc reactor off his own chest. And you're just like pathos acting. <laughs> like you are getting this in a comic book movie, man. I cannot. Yeah. This came like this came from David Hasselhoff as as Nick Fury. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I've seen. Yeah. Rivers, my soul has seen rivers. I saw them painting Lou Ferrigno green as as like, look at this, this the hope. We have come so far. I will refuse oh to ever God. let anyone forget these moments because the peak. We need to hold on to the peaks so that when we have the valleys, we can be like, yo. But they they earn the valleys through these peaks because man, that, yeah, the acting it was Shakespearean. Some of this stuff in this movie. Yeah. And the thing that's so special about that scene to me is he's not he's not action movie angry. He the he plays it. Like the the way that he talks to Steve is the backbone of the movie because you talk to people like that when you care about them. That is how you yell at your brother when he betrays you. That's not how you, like if you're mad at the villain or mad at some at your boss because they did something horrible, you don't yell at them like that. You yell at someone who you know, the the old meme, what is it? The the worst thing about betrayal is it never comes from an enemy. You know? That he is like, my brother betrayed me. We were together, you know? And I think that that sets the stage for the movie because the MC movies on as a whole, when they're at their best, are all character-driven. 
And I think that what they understood really well when making Infinity War and Endgame is that half the population of the world disappearing is something that's impossible to conceive of, and that can never be dramatic. It just can't be. Like, it can be cool to watch some stuff, but you can't, there's no, we can't conceive of that. But we can conceive of losing people. We can conceive of relationships fracturing. And so, like, I, that, the point I always make is, like, we at the end of Infinity War, we're not sad that half the world disappeared. We're sad that half of our favorite characters disappeared. And the fact that all the characters play the weight of losing the world, but losing the people they care about, I think it sets the tone for, like, obviously the movie's going to be fun because it's a Marvel movie, but it it is, when you rewatch it, it is like there's a weight hanging over it for all, almost the entire runtime where it's like, yeah, this is like a real, these people are wearing this. This is not just a thing that they get off of the mat about. They're like, yeah, I've been sitting in this for five years, and you feel that in basically from everyone's performances. The, yeah, the, something, whoever yeah, made yeah, the decision to, after the Cap Tony fight to just hit you with five years later is stomach punch every fucking time for me. Like, cause er we're so used to these guys just solving the problem, you know, in the next scene, like, Oh, I figured it out. This is what we got to do. They were like five years later. It's just like this guys. They, they really took this hell and you're going to have to hold mm -hmm. it. <laughs> yeah. And I, 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 what the, the great part about that is the fact that they go to Thanos they kill him, and it's the emptiest killing ever. It's the first it's time they're the actually has... really Avengers. It's really the first time they're truly, we can't stop this from getting worse. We're not actually going to prevent anything. We're just going to get revenge. We're going to avenge everyone who, who was taken out, and it's the emptiest that you feel. Like, it's, like they murdered that dude, and you're like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and shout out to Chris Hemsworth's reaction after he kills Thanos and there's just no there's no infinity stones to bring people back. There's not there's nothing left. He just kills him and it's like the way that he says should have gone for the head just so just so like distressed, depressed, like completely lost. And the way that it just fades out, everybody just in shock, realizing that there is no win here. There is no as, double. And as it's a writer, happening. watching this movie again today, as a writer, the brilliance of not trying to hit the lines on the nose. Like, they do such a good job. Of, like, there's moments where, like, oh, you could put a one-liner here that would be cute and kind of quippy. And they just like, no, we're going to just pan away to Ant-Man's face. And he's not going to say the thing. Or, you know, like, Thor's not going to have the great there's no great closure here where we high five and feel great. It's, it's just dark. <laughs> and we'll see these guys in five years and it'll be darker. And they, you know, um, and it's probably culminates the best with uh, Tony Stark as a character who always kind of approaches everything just slightly askew. And the, on the only time he really hits you with that, like movie one liner is the I'm Iron Man, but it's delivered like some Shakespearean tragedy shit. It's not, it wasn't delivered all cool and like, yeah, but I'm Iron Man. It was delivered with like, and the, the lines of a man giving the last words of his life. It was, it's just amazing. Yeah. And it's funny because you look at the way that Tony's story goes within this. They, the five years later happens, Ant-Man shows up and they're like, we can do this. We can find a way. And Tony's like, eh, I don't know. I feel <laughs> like I have, I have a, I have a good life. I have a kid. And there is this almost sense of a uh, peace about him, but it's that talk that he has with Pepper when he figures out the time travel, which when you realize that, oh, this is like something that he can't let go of and which ul ultimately meets is part of the reason that he meets his demise, but it kind of fits in the whole, like, there's things I got to fix. I got to, I got to take care of this. I got to handle this especially with the relationship that he had built with Peter Parker. So and, and that aspect of it, because of what has been built on in the previous films, um, in Homecoming and Infinity War, Civil War, you have those three as a background to put these things together and really make the loss feel like something for Tony, that he's motivated to get back into the game to help get everybody back. Here, here's just, what uh, always hits yeah. me about, about this the movie, too. Doctor Strange's entire plan relies on Tony being a hero in the end. 
Like his, mm-hmm. like yeah. from the time he says this one chance, the one chance is like you'll sacrifice yourself for everybody in the world if, yeah. when the push comes to shove. And damn it, if it's not true, you know, even in the last battle, he's like, if I tell you, it won't happen. And he knows the it happening is you going to you fit to die for everybody. And uh, damn, if he didn't mm-hmm. do it, man. You know, you're talking about panning the panning to reactions. The way that when Strange holds the finger up and they pan to Tony and it's like he realizes, oh, it's this. It's got to be this now. Mm-hmm. It's like that's a that's a sign. And it, watching it in the theater for the first time, you get the sense that oh, this is that, and you dread it. And it's like no, but then you realize it's the only way that this can work. And it's kind of like this really this catch twenty two where you're like, damn, I know we want him to save the world, but does he really have to die? No, no, they, no. They and I remember it, tearing up so after well. that. Yeah. They did it so well in the theater. I I missed when he got the stones like i like it, like it was like they they were struggling and when thanos is about to slap the glove i'm like what the fuck yeah. kind of movie is this <laughs> like, like we didn't just get through two hours and 45 minutes for this bullshit and and then it cuts and i'm like how did he get those stones you know and of course now watching it many times later i'm like oh it's his tech and all this stuff but man what what a moment dude yeah i think that's it's set up really well where like I remember not to be like, well, I actually got, but when I remember when I had the moment <laughs> where he start, went to snap, I had the thought of, oh, this is great. Cause I kind of, I put it together. I'm like, oh my God, the nanotech, that's how they're going to do it. Cause they, they just show you enough previously. They show you just enough that it's the nano that is like, oh shit. Like that's such a good, cause it's, it's really, cause it's just like so cathartic about the empty snap, you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. and, I, and I love that yeah, stuff. I, by the way, I love when a movie. I think the best movies give you stuff where you could have put it together, and you exactly. just and some some you know Jake put it together right away. I, I know all this stuff from the time I'm a kid. No, I I and I I, I, I I for the record I don't put together shit all the time. Just in this specific instance, I did. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm just yeah. I'm saying in this case, right? This case. Yeah. I normally I'm normally ten steps ahead of movies and stuff. Anyway, right. But in this case, man, they they got me. I'm I'm like, well, well what? Did, oh, he got this. What did he, he, he? Does he know like some sleight of hand? Like, <laughs> did he pickpocket this dude? Like, how are they gonna explain this plot hole? And of course, you know, you get, I get home or I go see it for the twentieth time in the theater. I'm like, oh yeah, because it's his. Oh yeah, yeah, of course he he's been doing this for for. Art. But man, what a what a moment! What a movie! So you talk about that moment, and I, I, I was I was looking at some of your tweets, Rod, before the show started, and one that you noticed is a show that you frequent frequently guested on with us, Secret Invasion, and oh, uh, one Mr. Rhodes, and uh, the fact that as Tony lays there dying, we have we have Rhodey there, and looking in retrospect now with Secret Invasion in the books, with the whole scroll thing. That's a that's a that's a bit of a tough look after after seeing that movie. And he's know? crying at the reading of the will, basically, too, man. I hey man, listen, yeah. listen. I I that made me as mad as J. Cole apologizing to Kendrick. Like <laughs> I'm like, this there are rules to this shit, man. You don't do there's certain things you know not to touch. Whoever thought that was clever. <laughs> Step forward. <laughs> I want to know your name. I want to know who, because th- it they better they better clean that up somehow. I don't know how they gonna clean that up, but they better fucking explain that shit a different way. Because it's no <laughs> way this is a goddamn scroll the whole time. It's no way, bro. Point out exactly what it is. The problem with it is it's clever, yeah. and that's not a good reason to do something. No, you know what I mean? Right. Like it is it it is purely a like oh isn't it so crazy? And it's like. It's like, isn't it so crazy? You're going to reconsider all the moments Rhodey had in the time. And it's like, but what if we reconsider them and make them worse? Like, it just, like, it doesn't right. actually, it's not enriching. Right. It's and, like, and, okay, yeah. so this, this Rhodey scroll was like a really good actor. What the fuck do you want me to take out of that? Yes. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense, man. And it, and it, I know someone thought it was so smart because it was like, oh, it's Don Cheadle. So it's, it's one of the A-listers. It's not like just some, some person in the background. Uh, and and P 
people love that character. They're going to feel so betrayed and shocked. And the shock value is not always good. You know what I mean? Like, you can yeah. you, you can take a shit on the table at a restaurant. It's shocking. It's not good. You know what I mean? And I so, like, mm-hmm. I did feel white hot anger tonight see, watching that scene again. I was like, oh, you motherfuckers. White you hot. motherfuckers. Who did this? <laughs> Who did this? I want names. I want fucking job titles. But... Uh, you know, I'm trying not to get too caught up in that because it's an appreciation moment that I'm trying to have. But the, the Secret War, of course, they, they can suck the biggest part of my balls. <laughs> now that's a statement. Oh my goodness! But uh, <laughs> yeah, I think, and it's funny because it's like you look at that scene and Tom Holland, who again in Infinity War and Endgame. Even in Endgame, in his brief scenes, acting his ass off at the end there with the crying. Like, that's just, like, he's just as good. Mm. So good. So good. I want to give Tom Holland a lot of credit because, man, he is our Spider-Man. He is mm. our Peter Parker. It is just uh, just beautiful to see. So, to your point, to have that mixed with that, just, it, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel good. Uh, it doesn't feel good to have. But... In terms of like other things, is there any other particular character story or moment, Rod, that kind of stands out to you? Like, I'll just say this quickly. I think we have all made jokes in the past about how Steve Rogers gets to have the happy ending with Peggy and he ain't go back in time to, to, to help <laughs> black folk in the 1940s <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> but... I always think about the Captain America, the first Avenger movie and the way that that ended and people have their thoughts about that movie in general, but I thought it was one of the more powerful endings of an MCU movie. Mm -hmm. Just the idea of waking up to everybody gone and, you know, Nick Fury asks him if he's okay. And he's like, I had a date and that's just how the movie ends. It's just like, yo, that's some powerful stuff. So him being at that shield facility and seeing Peggy there He's like, this is the first time he's like, oh, I thought I lost this moment. Let me go actually get it back. Thinking about it as we continue, I know at the time we enjoyed that and we had fun with that. How do you feel about seeing that story and how that closed for Cap? So uh, there's a couple of things you got to know about me. I married my high school sweetheart, right? So um, there are certain motivations in movies that I know I'm the opposite of most people. but Doctor Strange deciding in um, what if, like, I just want this woman so bad. If the rest of y'all got to die, that's just what got to happen. Um, <laughs> totally relate, you know, Cap being like, I did my part. I mean, we know he picked up the hammer, so he's worthy. He went back and he knew the rules. You can't fuck with time. You got to. He's like, well, I'm going to be with my boo and get old together the way that I deserve. He gave everything for not just his country, but the universe. I I've never had a problem with that man going back. What, what was he going to do? Stop racism? I'm sorry, y'all, but not no shields can stop racism. You could have blocked that bullet from MLK and then somebody would have got him a different way or some shit. What did Tony tell Cap? When you mess with time, time messes with you back. So that's, that's right. I, I don't, I've never had a problem with that, but I love that moment, the Thor moment um, with his mom. Once again, just yeah. great acting and stuff made me care about something I did not care about at all before that moment, which is, sounds cold because his mama did die, but I'd be damned if that shit didn't. I was like, oh, uh, it doesn't work. Move it on. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Go ahead. Go now, ahead. can I also give another defense of the Steve moment? For one, yeah, like, I mean, obviously, there's something, a phenomenon that happens a lot on Twitter where something will start off as a joke and then people will start to take it seriously. The civil yeah. rights thing was a joke. And then I, I've heard people say completely honestly, like, well, he goes back in time. It doesn't like, what the fuck are you talking about? You, uh, this, this movie, this movie, do you like, don't, do you not like movies? Like, it's not about being perfect in the world. Like, stop it. Um, also, do you know how anyway. fucking mad nerds would have been if, the post credits to Endgame was like, and Captain America solved yeah. racism. They were like, "What? No, no, yeah, it's like it's cut to him and like doing a sit-in. Like, what the fuck are you talking? About? Right, stop. Right. There, will, there will be no more racism in the MCU after this movie because the next movie, when yeah. when 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 Sam picks up the shield, no one thinks it's a big deal. They're just like, okay, and I don't. Yeah. 
Well, the well, next film to reveal is George Wallace. Like, stop it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> stop it. He saved that's the universe. That would be like a great what if. Is oh, what if oh, Captain yeah. America yeah. goes back and just tries to stop racism? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's a great what we'll if. We're Malcolm X and MLK just mm. chilling. <laughs> <laughs> It's like throwing the shield into like uh into like uh Jesse Helms and stuff. Just like what what, what was he doing? Mm. Yeah, throwing the shield off the walls of Congress to knock over Strom Thurmond when he's still busting the civil rights. Yeah. I just don't know what people want. People are always so weird about that. Um, but anyway, no, he goes back in time. But I think the, th- yeah. the thing that works is that I think that Steve's decision works because yeah. it's in tandem with Tony's decision. That you have characters, one who's super hedonistic and only does things for his pleasure, and one who is super altruistic and only does things for other people. And their arcs as characters is to make the opposite decision. That is called storytelling. It's beautiful. And I think t- the Tony thing is really obvious because we see that all the time in storytelling. All the time we see characters that are super selfish, that then make a heroic sacrifice a formerly selfish selfish person killing themselves to save other people is a storytelling trope as old as time the opposite is less common because in a lot of ways it feels like they're becoming a worse person but to a certain extent steve is the type of person who's so altruistic that he ends up not he, he steve is altruistic to the point where like it's actually more of like a self-denial than it is about helping other people like clearly he just is he doesn't on some level he doesn't feel like he's worthy of living a good life at, to start off that's kind of where the root is and eventually when he has this life when he does actually save a lot of people he is able to come to a place where he feels comfortable enough in what he has done in the amount of good he has done where he can say you know what i feel good enough about myself and what i've done for the world that i am able to accept love and able to accept a good life and i think that that is as compelling an arc as tony's it's just not super common so it's just like he made a self decision it's like yeah the dude saved the universe i think he's entitled to you know have sex with Haley atwell thank you very much it's a pretty good life <laughs> hey, for him uh, listen, and he gives yeah, like he gives sam the shield at the end which is like such mm-hmm. a dope yeah. moment to me um so yeah, I, I I totally agree. I've I always thought that yeah that joke went too far and it became like its own thing that I I, I acknowledge as a joke only, but just don't engage yes. in regular. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, a funny joke. joke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, I will always. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, always I here, I'm always here for some jokes. Like <laughs> it's, that's totally cool. Um, mm-hmm. you were talking about other character moments. Scott Lang seeing his daughter grown like basically a, a tween now. It, it and like yeah. that moment where he's like going down the streets of San Francisco and there's just trash in every neighborhood mm-hmm. and he stops the kid like what happened and the kid's like what and just keeps going like those, those moments yeah. like that they just kind of nail and like I feel like a lesser movie you know Michael Bay would have had you know the Asian security guard that was watching the thing do some like sticky funny like ha 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 you know moments and instead it's just like no it's just there's like i said it's it's the restraint from the quippy one-liners and stuff that normally feels so forced into all these type of hero movies to make us feel good and laugh and get through scenes and there's a lot of moments where there's just not that um steve and that like survivor's guilt group so mm-hmm. smart mm-hmm. Cause he's the ultimate survivor's guilt. Like he's done, he's actually been through this before. Everyone he yeah. knew died except Bucky. You know, <laughs> like he just came back and he's like, yeah. "Oh yeah, uh, I guess a few billion people have passed." You know, and this is not the world. I so him leading that group and you know talking to to the dude about like the date he's going on and how you just got to keep yeah. going. And we can't. We got to talk about the fact that Joe Russo cast himself as the first gay guy. I didn't notice that. Just one of the craziest <laughs> things that anyone's ever done. I yeah. can't. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that's insane that he did that. <laughs> just, I, I know. I, I told and yet they also, made a big deal about it beforehand. They made a big. The fact they made a big deal about it beforehand is the problem. I, also, like, um, man, I'd do yeah. that if I was him. <laughs> like, oh, the, I get yeah. it on some level. Absolutely. It's like, so funny, I, like, it's like, hey, I had to do it. It was such a big responsibility. I had to be the guy to to offhandedly say him when talking about a date. You know what that <laughs> is, dog? That is the Steph Curry from the logo. You know what I mean? Like, just this one's for yeah. me, guys. Like, I've given everyone enough 
jumpers no, by the that's line. That's like it. It's the Steph Curry from the logo of like forced allyship. It's like I'm such an ally. I'm gonna be the gay guy. <laughs> yeah, and that was Steph dancing and doing all the shit, uh-huh. man. Like he, because I think what he was really saying is this movie's so good. <laughs> this mm. won't even matter. Yeah. Like I can play this role. You can play this yeah. role. Anyone can play this role. <laughs> I made a dope movie. No one's gonna ever even think about this, but three nerds on a yeah. fucking Wednesday. Yeah. Five. It, I mean, it is. I will say this: it is might be the most common joke that friend of the show Michael Springthorpe makes, and I appreciate it every time he does. But yes, it is a thing we joke about it a lot because it is just so funny that he did that. It is oh so funny. God. It's so ridiculous. No, it is funny. It's like I said. I know that. I'm. I'm, I'm glad he did. I'm he knew he, he had one. That's all. Like all. Every when I saw that mm. scene today, I thought. Cause you knew you had one. You knew because if we <laughs> whack, we would have been all over that dude. Like, man, really? You couldn't find a gay guy to do this or whatever. He's like, I got it. Don't worry about it. No one's gonna say a word. <laughs> yeah, man. It's it's. It, I mean, you think about like the cap stuff and the Tony stuff, and again, like to the symmetry of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, their conversation in Avengers, where they're nose to nose, and it's like you ain't gonna you ain't gonna cut the wire. Oh, it was, you say so you're gonna you ain't gonna lay yourself on the line. And then Tony's like, I'll cut the wire. But nah, in this, he really did the thing. And, and so I, I'll run yeah. through a couple more because I, I know you said character moments. Yeah. Obviously, Nebula. Oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Obviously, Go. Nebula, right? No, knock it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, such yeah. a character that. Put it pit in that. Yeah, if you would have said she was going to be the linchpin of the third arc of this movie, I've been like, uh, you're out of your fucking mind. She's not even yep. in the top 20 people in, these, in this franchise. And she fucking kills mm-hmm. it. She has tears coming out of her black eyes. Her eyes are black as gold. You can't even see, but you can see the water because mm-hmm. she was acting. Karen Gillan was acting like that. Um, mm-hmm. That moment. Um, and I know this is very controversial. Once again, I'm just showing a lot of love and appreciation. But mm-hmm. uh, Clint and um, you know uh, the Scarlet. Uh, I mean, Clint and uh, oh, yeah. that was legitimately That's great. That was a, legit. Yeah, that was cool like the two people with no yeah. powers. Just mm-hmm. like going to another planet completely out of their element and not realizing one of them has to die and then fighting to the to the opposite to death. die. Like the yeah, yeah. like you, yeah. <laughs> you no one fight when we say fight to the death, we mean the opposite of what that shit was. <laughs> yeah. These motherfuckers <laughs> fought to the to the live or whatever. <laughs> and like oh it, it was such great pathos, um, and such, you know. Uh, there's i get the misgivings about clint and uh his proclivities yeah. in the five years like i'm not gonna defend that shit that was pretty whack uh <laughs> for him to do that but totally within character let me just say yeah. not for a second I, I, I go, think honestly, yeah i think that that's another thing where the joke has become too much we're like yeah, yeah. like people act like it's like a gotcha like did you realize that he was going around the world killing people it's like that's in the movie. Yeah, that's the text. Yeah, of the yeah. Movie. The movie. Dude, that's not a like, Yeah, he did really yeah. bad stuff. We know. <laughs> yeah. The only thing the movie doesn't put together is like it seems like you're killing a lot of not white people. You know what I mean? Like that's the only thing the movie didn't say. But I, in my mind, he killed some Russians first. Like he, like if we yeah. if we went through his whole resume, he stopped at all the Liam Neeson countries and gave them some. Also, too. <laughs> it allowed us to have one scene of Haruki Sonata in the movie, and so I'll take yeah. that. I, we got it was worth it, bro. Yeah. That that scene it could be its own fucking movie, dog. That the the, yeah. the neon lights, the you know the yeah. Javanese, the fucking swords. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, like people are gonna look me in the eye and tell me that there's a cooler gang to have a shootout sword out than with the yakuza. Stop it. The yakuza Stop. is the most cinematic gang. That's why they did Lo- it. it. It looks cool. <laughs> I hate to say it, Loki, coolest Hakko has ever been. Oh I hate yeah, to say I mean, it. Oh, I hate yeah. to say it because I know he's a hero. Yeah, he's got the time. he's got the J six cut. He's got the J six haircut. But other than that, yep. yeah, yeah. <laughs> other than that, but but it fit when he showed the haircut. I said, "Yo, that's what he would have done. He would have got the haircut before he killed them brown people, man. He would. You don't go kill a bunch of brown people with the haircut he used to have. That makes so much sense. Oh." Yeah. But yeah, I think no. I think I've run through everybody. So yeah, I, at least yeah. for me, I'm, I'm sure there's other characters, but those yeah. are the main ones. Yeah. No. Nah, um. I mean, I mean, shoot the 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 Anya left uh, mm-hmm. montage, like portals. Portals hits different. Always does. Every single time. Mm. Every single time you see everybody come back. The Guardians come back. Spidey, Strange, Wanda. 
Bruh. How about Wanda having Thanos in a in a in a in Bruh. jail? If like, you would say he he in trouble. Bruh, <laughs> have y'all seen um? Have y'all ever seen the movie? I'm gonna get you, sucker. I'm gonna get you, sucker. Yeah, I, I, I have. have. Okay, okay. Uh, this is such a deep cut, and I, I forgive That's me fine. if no one else knows this 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 reference. But it's when <laughs> it's when Dawn threw Damon Wayne's character up against the wall. And cause she was on her period and she got superpowers because he was trying to like threaten her and he and he starts screaming very high pitched, like ah ah and then um and then Kadeem Harson comes over and knocks her out with like a brick or something from behind and he's like, Bro, what happened to you? Like what what like he's like, Man, you you didn't hear me yelling for help. He was like, Yeah, you were screaming like ah ah like a bitch. He was like, No, I wasn't. I was saying, ah, oh, come get her off of me. Come get this. And that's what Thanos <laughs> looks like when Wanda puts him in there. Yes. And now, and he goes, right, like, he says something like, fire, rain, or rain, fire. And it's just like, yeah. And then the, whole, had, and then the homie is like, yo, wait a minute. You want fire? You want fire? That's on all of our, they'll do it now. <laughs> he had this man up against that wall, bruh. He ain't no, no way out. She could have beaten him by herself. She was that bad. And that's why I will never hate that Doctor Strange movie. She is the scariest person in the yeah. damn MCU. Like, I, <laughs> Unleash really Wanda should make everyone tremble in their boots because Thanos was trembling in his boots at, during that. He wasn't as afraid of Captain Marvel as he was of this woman who he said, I don't even know who you are. Oh, he did mm. by the end of that damn chokehold he did. Mm. Yeah, she hit him with the you will. And it was like, oh, yeah, it got it got real after that. Um, I, I did love I did love the the gauntlet pass around. Mm-hmm. Everybody kind of interacting with each other. That was cool too. It did just mm-hmm. it's a cinematic idea. Like it, it, the thing about it is that like the final fight scene is my biggest complaint with the final fight scene is that it takes place in nowhere, but right. um, not the planet. I mean, like the fact that it just looks completely anonymous. But mm-hmm. the thing is, it has it, it is. They have a lot of interesting ideas of how to break the fight up into different segments and keep you <laughs> engaged the entire time, which is easier said than done. Um, it's mm-hmm. not, it's not, it's, it, it, you can, um, you can easily imagine a fight scene with this many characters feeling like none of the individual characters matter. Yeah. yeah. Also, after we've yeah. done the uh, Age of Ultron and the Sokovia Accords, mm-hmm. having it in a populated place is, is people are going to feel a way about fair. that shit again. I, like, I, 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 it's fair. Yeah, and then in and then in the movie before that, we had fights in like other galaxies and shit. They were, yeah. they were like fighting everywhere, so you knew it was gonna end up being a place that it was just gonna be us versus y'all. But listen, on your left cap hits every mm-hmm. time, mm-hmm. and the brilliance of it is that you still have Tony, Thor, and Steve mm-hmm. fighting Thanos in the for like ten minutes. Like they fought, they fought that dude. And he was like whooping their ass, but it was like, you know, give and go. He breaks the shield and you and Steve yeah. like tightens it up on his like cut arm, and you're just like, damn. And and like you see the army of mass, and you're just like, Steve gonna die. <laughs> like, like Yeah, there's there's uh, so much I what I love is there's so much build up to that moment because it's like you could even go back further to when uh, Smart Hulk snaps. Yes, and that whole scene, the build up to that was awesome. Yes, and when the Thanos army comes through the portal and they blow up the Avengers compound, like yes. that shit was crazy. Yeah, like the whole thing, the whole build up. I was, do want was so well done. I would yeah. like it. Uh, so I said a TV series, but maybe that's too ambitious. A Marvel shorts, like a fifteen minute thing of just Doctor Strange and them organizing the portals would be amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, from a comedic perspective, it would have to be because I just imagine it's hurting cats. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, <laughs> well, all right, so what line are we going to say when we come in? It's like, you know, like everyone going around the room, like, oh, we going to say this, my catchphrase, no, no. And, and it's on your left and cat. Who's going to be up know? front? It's like, yes. why? So wait, the group is, it's like, this is the Wakandan group. But like who? Why? Why are they the three up front? Why can't everyone be? You know. Yeah. Yes, I feel like, and I feel like all the black pe- black heroes like unite behind that. Like it should be them. I mean, we fought in their country last. You know all that shit. Um, and I feel like uh, also uh, Sam. The way they had the audio of Sam saying like, oh, on your left cap, 
uh, so it's just so brilliant. It's just like a little detail, but because yeah. it's, it's, it's like hope is in his ear, but it's so quiet, and you're like, you, we've given up hope at this point. <laughs> we were like, oh god, yeah. the Avengers are going to lose, <laughs> and it's like oh, on your left, Cap, Cap on your left, and you're like, oh my god, here they come through the portals. Bucky, he needs five minutes to go get his guns because he shows up with the heat, like. <laughs> You know, yeah. I, like there's so many moments I want to see, like, and I just feel like Doctor Strange is the perfect person, like the straight man in this comedy to be annoyed with everyone's million different, like, thing of like, all right, let me make a portal for this guy to get his gun and this shit. And then, you know, Wong's like, you know, I, like I even love the moment of Wong being like, what? That's not enough portals? Or whatever. Like, like, I loved all that stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's so, it was so you want good. more? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, throughout the movie, there's just so many scenes. I mean, obviously, we talk about the final one. I was a big fan of the idea of them going back to previous uh, events in time that they visited. And just, like, the logistical conversation that they all have before they make the trip about w which Infinity Stone is where. Thor's explanation of it as he's drunk and just, like, he's he's just, like, completely out of it and stuff like that. And then Black Widow realizing, like, wait a minute. 2012 you could just pick up like three of these stones and just get and get the these, heist like all going ant-man being the guy who understands the heist but not time travel is so smart because that is scott lang um <laughs> to a t is like i do know how yeah. to steal shit and of course like all movies heist gotta go wrong so when when loki gets that thing and you because like in the movie they're just like how are they gonna fix this and they're it's like oh we'll go back yeah. even further and revisit another mcu movie and that's when a that's why I say this movie, ha it won't be duplicated because it is a love letter to all the movies in the MCU before it. Like it's, and it, yeah. it appreciates those movies as much as the nerdiest nerd who watched those movies appreciates those movies. So it is us going like, damn, Thor got the ax now. He don't got the hammer. And then being like, no, you can go back and get the hammer now. Now you got the hammer and the ax. And it's just super nerd orgasm when you see him dual wielding the hammer. And it's such a little thing, but it's stuff like that all throughout this movie. You know, these, the, you know, it is a uh, oh, craft is so well, craft yeah. is so well. The, the, the conversation Every with Loki back. after he's in cuffs and they're like, just got to go take the elevator down. You know, this mundane thing, this, which is this kind of stuff I love as a, as a comedy person of like, Oh man, like how you get Loki downstairs is funny. There's there like let's what if we revisit that moment and not the like him getting slammed puny god? It's more funny when he's got cuffs on him and they're like, all right, so I guess we turn him over to Shield now. That is so good. And so yeah, this this movie Cap in the elevator that. saying Hail Hydra, like that whole thing from Winter Soldier. Like, yo, like all of these things just hit all over throughout the movie. They're hitting Did all, all watch these Ages of Shield? that we watch. Did, did y'all watch Ages of Shield? I watched it up to a point. Okay. I watched yeah. it maybe like season two or three. Okay, yeah. so you saw the part when they when those guys show up, they get the shit, and you're like, "Those the bad guys from Ages of Chill," and and you had that yeah. moment of like, "Oh wait, but they know now that those are the bad guys." And bad the way guys, he plays right. that, like, because I we were all were waiting on it, right? We were all waiting on like, "All right, if anybody wants to get out, <laughs> you know," and he stays just like, "Hell, Hydra," you like. Fuck, so smart, so brilliant. Uh. <laughs> to to Jake's point about like actors, yo, they got Robert Redford back for mm -hmm. that. that and the that, thing, that, about, the thing about let me there's a little fun thing about that that he had the movie he made previous before that, The Old Man and the Gun. The whole press tour was this is Robert Redford's final movie. That you can read interviews, he's talking about my final movie because he couldn't say that he was in Endgame. <laughs> <laughs> so Robert Redford, one of the most legendary actors of all time, his final screen credit. Unless something changes, will be Avengers Endgame. Um, and I think yeah. I want to talk about quickly because yeah. we went to the plot. I think I think that's important about this movie is that it is just insane the cultural impact it has had. That I think that people who want to poo poo the MC will be like, "This is just a bunch of callbacks for nerds or whatever." But like, everyone knows what a, the snap is. Everyone knows who Thanos is. Like these, it, it, this specific movie has so much, um, you know. Like, there's a whole bit in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem where they're talking about how Mark Ruffalo improvised the scene at the diner. Like, it is just a totemic movie in that way, in that, like, I think that's a thing that other franchises won't be able to capture either because, like, yeah, is there anything 
are there references in the entirety of the DCEU combined than in just this movie? You know, like, I think it's just, there's just a way that it's, this movie is iconic in a way that you can imagine it not being. You can imagine like, oh, they're just playing the hits from the other stuff. It's not as iconic as what came before. But like, no, this movie in itself is like as iconic as anything else in the MCU, which I think is, once again, really saying something. Yeah, if yeah. if you go back and watch this today, it still hits, man. And we've seen, and that's hitting after we've seen all the other shit after it, and everyone else's attempt, mm-hmm. and it still hits different than that other stuff, man. And I, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with recognizing that. I think what happens in nerd culture is uh, a lot of times it can get a little toxic. It can turn too much to the negative, and then this becomes like. Well, we expect the great stuff and we just think that's okay. And the good and the bad stuff, that's what it really is the problem, the bad stuff. And it's like, but we don't recognize when it's yeah. great. Saying something's bad all the time doesn't, that means nothing to me now because you think everything's bad and we never give credit. I think in order to hate Secret War, Secret Invasion, you need to love this movie so you can be like agreed that, like because then at least you're you're calling balls and strikes you're being fair you're like no 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 this sucked and this is let me tell you why it sucked i got 37 reasons to suck now this was good do more of this like so i think this is the ultimate this was good for the mcu um so shout out to the russo brothers too for i mean what we got uh winter soldier we got civil war and Civil then we got War, in game and, and Infinity Buddy. War, bruh. Yeah. Infinity War, like Man. they really, honestly, I'm glad they made that deal with the devil to make them good at directing Marvel movies. And then the the price, of course, was that they weren't able to direct anything good afterwards. Right, and yeah. so. You know, um, it's really insane to watch the Gray Man and be like, "These people made a movie I liked." That's just kind of crazy. Ah! But uh, well, <laughs> listen, in defense of the Gray Man, because uh, I did watch that, it is. A really good impossible white man film. It's a bad film film. Yeah. Which is fine. Yeah. But there's a genre of movie, Impossible White Man, where I will watch a white man kill 90 people I mean, for no is. reason. Shout out to Reed. But, but I think you and I are in agreement here where it's like if the bar is I will watch, then like yeah, yeah. there's a lot of movies. I'm, not, I'm talking about yeah. I watch I'll, I'll watch a lot of movies. I'm not uh, like I might watch. Yeah. I'm not defending the cinematic quality of the gray man yeah. as much as I am at just saying it is a ode to a genre that I love. And so as an entry mm. into the impossible white man genre, it, it stands in that respect as a, as a movie where you would like acting and uh, you know, things that are, that are believable. Well, maybe it's it's just, that. it just looks, you know, it, the biggest thing about it is it just looks hot horrible it is like one of the worst it cost like 200 million dollars and it looked both it's very drab it's drab drab. like the lighting's terrible is a lot of bad green screens a lot of bad Mm. it's just like oh shit these guys they lost Mm. it but anyway they made a great movie here so shouts to you anthony and and joe didn't they also do a movie with chadwick like the 13 something yeah 12 rounds no no, 12 rounds the john scene movie and they they Produced twenty one bridges. They didn't direct twenty one bridges. Okay. Oh yeah. Why did okay, I confuse? Produced. Twelve that. rounds okay. is the John Cena movie. I haven't seen twenty one bridges, but I have seen okay. twelve rounds. <laughs> Actually, twenty one twenty one bridges is not. I've terrible. heard it's good. Okay. Twelve okay. rounds is not good. Okay. Yeah, twelve rounds is not good. Well, well, yeah, well, shout out, well, shout out to them because uh, yeah. if I was those guys, y'all would never be able to tell me shit either. <laughs> I know they like, also they also pr- they produced everything ever all at once. They've done good stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Directing. It's hard. And the funny thing too is that like they directed, they were the directing producers on my favorite television show of all time, Community. And so when they right. started directing MC movies, I'm like, holy shit! The people who directed my favorite show ever are now directing MC movies. They direct the yep. movies I love, and um, you know, I hope whatever you know, they do next is good. You know what it is, Jake? It's Phil Jackson. Mm-hmm. It's Phil Jackson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Phil, feels like give me MJ and Kobe, I'll figure this shit out. But oh, y'all want yeah. me to win with with, with Randy Brown? Like, pardon me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what did y'all expect from me? Nah, man. Second round lock, knockout. We out of here. <laughs> yeah, come on, Genie. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I want, I want, I, <laughs> I do want to spin this, uh, spin this a little forward as when I think about, because I was just thinking about, because I saw earlier today that, oh, the, the boys season four mm-hmm. is completed and ready for release in June. I mean, you think about what the MCU created and to the point of Endgame and what has come after that and what it has allowed to enter the not only TV, but movies as well. 
I mean, stuff like The Boy, stuff like Invincible, all of those, those particular things have now entered the space, and none of that is possible without the success that, Even, that Marvel has had. I take it one step further and say Zack Snyder's DCEU is a response to because what happened is oh, that. Of course. Um, yeah. yeah, what happens is that the MCU is so it tackled the casting, as Jake pointed out. It tackles the casting so well that the heroes are actually like earnest and people that mm-hmm. you know are yeah. trying to do their best. And the cynicism doesn't necessarily come from within the hero. The cynicism comes from the world, right? That they're trying to change. It's you know, it's Captain America finding out like Shield has nukes or whatever. You know, it's not it's it's not like Captain America's like nuke those motherfuckers. Everything <laughs> since then, we've had so many like, what if Superman was evil? What if yeah. what if Batman killed people? What if you know? And the boys <laughs> is kind of what if Superman was evil? You know, Invincible is kind of what if Superman was evil? Um, and I'm not denigrating those, but I'm just saying like that's how much of an impact the MCU had. Even the people that zag off the MCU are still being influenced by like trying to to yeah. to do something inspired by the MCU. Yeah, I mean, create. I mean, creating something like this, which is, you know, for everything that we read and find out that they don't actually, you know, it's not as intricate as it seems. The fact that it does come off that way, and and it did for so long in a way that really seemingly worked out perfectly for a decade, is insanity to me. That aspect of it is not lost on me at all. As we've built to a point where they could have this run after the fact where a no way home could exist. Also, it's very bring... difficult, right? Like, cause like yeah, hard. What, yeah. What, what a lot of people think making a movie is, is like a person comes up with an idea, writes a script and then a movie's done off of that. And <clears throat> sometimes the brilliance is in the editing bay. You know, sometimes it's in the reshoots, you know, some, sometimes it's in the person that goes, man, th- I think they fucked this up in this other movie. I, we dropped our, yeah. we dropped the ball and then going, no, but we can retcon that. Mm. And now Thor's mom yeah. is in this. Mm. And now, now it does. Now it is yeah. good. And you, you know, Iron Man three was a movie for me where I saw Iron Man th- three in the theater and I didn't get it. And I'll regret that for the rest of my life. Cause now it's one of my favorite movies I- I- ever but it took them making it matter. Like it, 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 it helped when they were like, yo, this man got PTSD and want to put a suit of armor around the whole world. And when Tony says that to them, like I had a vision, remember how we hated that. Right. In, in Ultron, like, to these Ultron. fake ass, yeah. these fake ass commercials. But he's like, I had a, vi- I thought it was a dream, but no, I should have been. And y'all should have been helping me put a fucking suit of armor around the world. And I'm like, look at y'all retconning stuff that that we were like, yeah. bullshit. That's the power yeah. of the whole like machine coming together to work on mm-hmm. these problems, not just like a person with a great idea and then yeah. you know yada 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 perfect movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think the the thing people I think mistake it's actually the opposite of what people think makes a good cinematic universe where people think that meticulously planning out everything is what makes it good when actually being open to adjusting on the fly but mm-hmm. not but making it seamless whereas like not like and then i say it's seamless because like what you don't want to do is like rise of skywalker and like basically say like everything we did doesn't matter you know what i mean and marvel never does that but like finding a way to not negate what happened previously, but to be able to course correct and to not be so married to a certain idea you have. And I think that that is what makes like Endgame, so much of the stuff that happens in Endgame feels like it was has been being set up for, you know, the past seven, eight years. But going back to the Avengers, people, like people, it feels like Endgame is inevitable from the first Avengers movie, but they weren't thinking about Endgame when they made the first Avengers movie. The no. reason it works is because they, when they were writing Endgame, they're like, let's put all of these nuggets in, put these callbacks in here so it feels like it's connected. Because instead of putting a bridge forward, they're building a bridge behind themselves to connect things in, in post, which is, I think, how you make storytelling that is both satisfying, but also not, but also like able to respond to audience pressure which is not always a bad thing mm-hmm. yeah yeah I, yeah i mean to to that point like adjusting on the fly like 
just even something as simple as as James Gunn not being happy that Gamora got killed off and him trying to fix that for mm-hmm. Guardians Volume 3 and what ended up coming out, which I think was a a truly wonderful way mm-hmm. of telling the end of Peter and Gamora's story and finding a way to do it without doing the usual, well, they'll find a way back to each yeah. other. But having it having a relationship and an understanding that, hey, we had this time, but this is a different time for both of us. And we can accept that and be cool with it as opposed to just like forcing something. Mm-hmm. So like even some stuff like off that, you got to give credit to the minds that are behind this and being able to put stuff like that together in something that was something that he wasn't happy with, mm-hmm. but was able to find, make the best out of it. Like you get stuff like that too after the fact. That's why like where I'll be like phase, uh, you know, a lot of phase four gets gets shit on a lot and, you know, phase five to a degree. And, and, and I'll, you know, give the critics some, you know, kudos for in the sense for like, there's some of the stuff that you can understand, but also I feel like there's still a lot of good and, I just think you have to look at it from the perspective of what are we comparing this to? We're comparing this to something just well, incredible. I'm a Charlotte Hornets fan. You know, I don't know who y'all cheer for in the NBA or whatnot. I mean, I've been in the, 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 the Knicks, Knicks and the, the, the Knicks Jets. Um, okay. The Yankees Knicks. is really the only team that I've been winning in my lifetime. Yeah, so. okay. Unfortunately. And, and Jets for you too? Okay. Jets and yeah, Jets. unlike him, I'm a Mets fan. So my life has been nothing but misery since okay. I was born. So, so then we can all relate on most most levels except for the Yankees thing. Mm-hmm. Uh MCU fans sound like Yankees fans. Yeah. You know, where you where you're just like, mm-hmm. why don't we win the championship every year? And I'm <laughs> yes. I'm a Hornets fan going Good like comparison. what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like 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 I'm <laughs> like, oh we made the playoffs two we made the play in two years ago. What a great season we had. Remember that? And what's happening mm-hmm. now is like the uh you know the, if the if, if somehow the MCU goes to the finals but loses uh four to three it's like what a shitty year what a shitty year we had and the good the highs don't count anymore it's only the valleys and and I think in a weird way it got damn Brandon Miller I'm sorry Brandon Miller just dunked on the no <laughs> That's all good no I'm sorry anyway but um there's something to it about like we don't get to enjoy the Brandon Miller dunk. Because yeah. we're only looking for the championship. If it's not LeBron or Buss, we don't give a fuck. And it kind of mm-hmm. fucked up what I loved about nerd culture mm-hmm. before, like, and it's not their fault, but before Endgame, I really loved that we all were waiting on something to build mm-hmm. and looking forward to yeah. it. And now it's become like, and, and part of it is also because of Disney Plus, but part it now it's kind of become like, eh, more more content? Are we doing another? Are we still playing basketball, guys? Are we, we're we not over basketball yeah. yet, you know? You know what it's like? It's yeah. uh, that the best, my favorite meal I've ever had was at a restaurant called, uh, I think, Saracino's on the Boston's North End. It was a uh, shrimp and scallop fettuccine Alfredo. And it was delicious. It was my favorite meal I've ever had. I think I was like 18. I was visiting Emerson College. And uh, because of that, the tilapia I made for myself today was disgusting because it wasn't as good as that. It wasn't as good as that, so it's bad. Every other meal I've had, I want to vomit. Ugh. Why can't it, why can't every meal be as good as that? What my favorite meal I've ever had? And it's like, yeah, if I if I fucking burn, if I were to burn the tilapia, you know, or right. undercook it, yeah, it would be gross. I can say that. But like, is right. it good? Am I satis- Am I satisfied that I ate tilapia tonight? Yes, I am. Which is in this essay, I'll explain why I enjoyed Moon Knight. You know what I mean? Like that's what I'm talking. I mean, it's it, it it's it's pretty amazing. Like the same perfect, uh, the perfect amount of events that brought the MCU to its heights this the in some ways the imperfect events coming together has led to what it currently is in terms of its of its critiquing and criticism and you know nothing can be mentioned about the MCU changing drastically without mentioning the passing of Chadwick Boseman and how yeah. that greatly affected everything that they were going mm-hmm. to and and like uh, that's the other forward. thing I wrote down earlier they had an incredible run of off-screen luck just like an incredible yeah. run yeah. of just like mm-hmm. so many people being involved in all these projects and just not not, and not getting spending. disgruntled. No one, yeah. We we still don't have an like on like a on set thing. 
Like that. Do you understand mm-hmm. how hard that is? <laughs> like the, no one ever pissed yeah. anyone off and, and like got busted. Yeah. Like oh, you know this guy. Well, not anything that got not anything that got out publicly. But yeah. in in the age of the fucking yeah. cell phone and social media. Yeah. That is, yeah. and even right. right. privately, it's not as bad as even other things. Yeah, it's, like, like, it's like one yeah. or two incidents, as opposed to like I think the biggest thing there is real. I think it's just Robert Downey Jr. set the tone, and I think yeah. that like by all accounts, especially like with something like Endgame, where you have all these, like right. from what I've heard, like you know, be hearing behind the scenes stuff is like, if you're you know a Chris Pratt, you can't really act that much like a dick on the side of Endgame because Robert Downey Jr. is ahead of you on the call sheet, yeah. and if he's not acting like a dick, then you it's don't Tim, have a right to act like Tim, a dick. It's Tim, it's Tim Duncan letting Popovich cut him out, cuss him out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, what, okay, mm-hmm. so what you yep. gonna do? Nothing. You, he's cussing out the best player in the goddamn team. It's we, we all get cussed out. That's what we do now. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's just it's an incredible run of just like some of it's just luck, and so now some of their luck is finally coming due. You know. The Jonathan Majors thing, um, yep. the you know the the stuff where um, the pandemic hits, and all of a sudden all these studios going to like a, a content cranking out machine, and the quality of your your CGI and stuff ends up going down because you're overworking people and, and and you're trying to do like Star Wars and this and that. Like it's it it it, it it's gonna everything crescendos because eventually it comes down, and I think. A crescendo, you know, like we hit that in game, that that Infinity War, and now it's got to come down. I would just say their come down is still higher than most most people's like yeah. come up, and and it is what it is, and it's will fizzle out eventually. I don't know what the last thing will be that'll make us go like, all right, we, we're moving on, but it'll fizzle out eventually. But right now, like they 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 still got a puncher's chance every time they put something out, so they're they're gonna keep doing it. I will just I will just say this as you mentioned that rot, um, especially after the events of today, and we'll talk about it later this week. But what they have with X Men ninety seven is something special, mm-hmm. and I and that has to be said that mm-hmm. that show is special. I did I did not think it would be that. I thought it would just be like a nice nostalgia ploy, but buddy, well, I, why, I I, I have why, to admit I am shocked. This is why you didn't cancel your Disney Plus, you know. Y'all said you're gonna do it. Not you two specifically, but you know what I mean. Everyone listening. <laughs> Y'all had our moments. I can write it off on my taxes, so yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, but uh, we all had our moments, you know, of like, well, if uh, if this is all y'all got, then why should I even? And and then just you know, they just know like once every two to three months they need to put something out. And just if if a couple of those things are hitting, like the way X Men ninety seven is hitting. It's undeniable, and now we're back. Like I've, I've seen, everyone's like watching this show. I thought we all were out, guys. We're not out. We're never out if they keep making good stuff. Yeah. So they just got to keep making good stuff. It's easy to take a shot at the king. When you're the king, it's easy to take shots, and people have been taking shots for a couple years now. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. There's you, always an opportunity. What do y'all think about the that? fact that they're not gonna have movies this year? Because I I love it. I think we need a law. I think it's great. Yeah, the one just the one the one Deadpool, the Deadpool. movie in the mid it right smack dab in the summer. I really think is perfect. It kind of builds back the anticipation uh-huh. for stuff to come yep. out. Yes. Yeah, and I really want to see Thank other you. movies. And this is the petty in me, guys, okay? Once again, I described it as a sports team because I'm rooting for the MCU. Yeah. Uh, I really want to see some other people fail. God, I want to see it so bad. Just so I can be like, oh, it's not so easy, is it? It's not so, oh, mm. oh, you're just not going to. So you're telling me it wasn't was, just Marvel yeah. not making billion-dollar movies? No one's making billion-dollar movies. Huh, can we take a moment to 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 breathe that in for a second, everyone, and, and maybe just stop hating on this one. That energy period. is not, is never the same. You notice that energy is never the it's same. never the same when these other <laughs> movies don't do it, bro. It's never the same. We gotta, Very I gotta noticeable. watch seven months of Marvel's press run, like, why, why the Marvels ain't good. And then you got other mad movies not making as much or not being as critically acclaimed, and we still don't get that same energy, man. Now, I will say, with James Gunn running DC... And with the with the, what they have with Superman, I think competition will be good. If that is good, I just, hope so. That's what that's what you want. You I want will, to, I, I, will, I am rooting for that movie to do I well. I will always call balls and strikes. I think it sucks that DCU was bad. I think 
we mm-hmm. in a perfect it, competition makes things better and also as a nerd i'd never root against my own yeah. entertainment what kind of dummy does yeah. that <laughs> Like, oh man, yeah, I really the w- thing I always would You'd say be like Rob, Rob, when people would ask me about that, it's like I'm going to see these movies. I want them to be good because I'm going to have to spend two hours with them. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I'm going. It matters, yeah. This is this is on the calendar, dog. If they put it out, I'm going. My wife stopped going to some of these and I will go by myself. That's how committed I am to being oh. like, I'm gonna see this. Rod, well, I go to the I go to the movies by myself truly at least once a week. You're I mean, I'll yeah. see anything. So yeah. it's like, oh, do you want this movie to be good? Yes, I want it. Did I think that you know uh, the Flash was going to be good? No, but I no. wanted it to be good because I, I was going to be there. Listen, I'll lie to myself nice. for thirty yeah. minutes, like for the first thirty minutes. I'm yeah. like, nah, it could get good. It could get yeah. see because if you look at it like that, and then like two hours in, I'm like, oh god, y'all did it, again. <laughs> like y'all that, did it. Yeah. But I kind of do want some other people to have yeah. like a crack at the at the summer, and I I hope that collectively them taking some time off one higher quality stuff because yeah. people need time to make this stuff. Yeah. But two, the audience needs to appreciate it. You know, absent makes the hard go finder and, and maybe we'll get back to like, I don't think we're ever getting the end game level, but we'll get back to like, maybe like no. Avengers level, like the first Avengers or something. Yeah. You know? And that's really, honestly, you want, you want to hit on that level. You want to make sure that you have people excited. Like what Florence Pugh did with the Thunderbolts promoting that. Have your, have your really, uh, charismatic actors and people promote the stuff um have a um, float aman Vellani as much as you possibly mm-hmm. can and have her promote the stuff because she wants to be here she wants to do good work with the with marvel mm-hmm. like you you gotta tap into that stuff just the the simple stuff of the seeing the stuff that bernthal put out last week with mm-hmm. uh the cast of daredevil mm-hmm. and all of that stuff that's because some of these want. some you, of these people have been doing this these characters for 10 years and they've been on top so i get their like being over it like i get it i'm not i'm not saying it's like a good thing that they're over it but like yeah if you don't want to be drax that makes yeah. sense like it's but like mm. aman Vellani, let's let's look at the new mm. let's look at the new hype the new people coming in mm. you think um the people from the from the marvel netflix shows aren't extremely excited to be a part of the mcu like you see it mm. you can feel it from their social media being like okay now we over here with the big dogs and um the thing i want to say i forgot uh, before we, you know whenever you guys are gonna wrap up i want to make sure i get this yeah. point in mm-hmm. endgame yeah, sure. also had is a testament to like intentional diversity it is a testament to mm-hmm. bringing people together whose stories who mm-hmm. don't get to portray the heroes in these stories too often, who get pushed to the back, who don't get f- front screen billing. And and, 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 and and the only awkward moment in the last fight is, of course, when all the women do it. But I love that moment because I, I, <laughs> yeah. the only thing they didn't do was play like Destiny's Child or something, you know, it during like <laughs> just change the mu- music real quick. Yeah. But it, that moment mattered to me so much because I'm like, yo, they did this work on purpose. Cause so they could have a moment where it's like, yeah, the screen is filled with a dozen women superheroes, and we did do that, and we did make it imp- important and intentional that they're here. And these, and I think this phase five is hard. F- I understand why people are down on it, but it's hard for me not to defend it because so much of it is a testament to like studios putting a lot of money and time behind like other people yeah. that aren't mm-hmm. white dudes and being like but what if we make a movie with this? And I'm like, it's hard for me to give it up. I know I'm, I'm biased as fuck, but it's hard for me to just yeah. be like, it all sucks. I'm like, nah, dog, yeah, but, I, I like it. Yeah. I like this too. Yeah. I, I also think that, you know, I have complaints with some of the things he's done. I'm not, you know, going to be glazing him 100% of the time. But I, I think the thing about it, which... I think makes it worth defending is I honestly think that Kevin Feige does care about it. Like, I don't think it's a ploy for him. I think he does sincerely want to do that. And so like, I, that's why I'm sim- similar with you where I was like, if they're doing, trying to tell more diverse stories, I want to back that up because like Hollywood is looking for any excuse to say that it didn't work. Like they'll give yep. a white character 17 chances, but it's like, oh, yeah. the Marvels didn't work. We're going to be giving you uh, we're, the next, uh, every new Avenger is going to be played by a guy named Caden. Sorry. Couldn't help you. 
<laughs> yeah, because like Taylor Kish has gotten yeah. so many chances. You know what I mean? He's, he Taylor, too many. I love- Sorry, too many. I know people love Friday yes. Night too many. He had too many chances. Right. He got so many chances. He got to play Gambit with the wrong type of accent. Like this man is has gotten so many movies. They they're hiding him in movies now. The trailer don't even show him. You get thirty I mean, minutes okay. of a movie. That, this what you're saying stopped being true like five years ago. Hollywood eventually give up on him. <laughs> He's not still doing stuff. I don't know, dog. I seen a movie the other like not too long ago where he was the bad guy in the movie and he wasn't in the trailer. And I said, man, th- what the fuck, Taylor Kish? What the fuck? <laughs> but but my point isn't how recent the chances are, Jake. You're getting lost. Fair, the fair. point is he got yeah, 50 sorry, of sorry, them. Sorry. Yeah. You're right. Like, no, you're right. He definitely yeah, did. Yeah. He got too many chances. Yeah, that um, Mars movie would have ended everyone but him. And meanwhile, you know, we're like, <laughs> well, Neil DaCosta I mean, ever direct it, again? You know? It basically ended the, the director of it had to go back to making cartoons. <laughs> Right, <laughs> like he, he's now hurting other people's careers is how many chances he got but yeah I, I, my point being like uh there's moments yeah. in this movie that are so like they're not even doing the like message but it but it's intentional yeah. because behind the scenes they're like yeah we got to make sure these characters are a big part of it um so yeah i i i i think that's another reason i defend it is because i don't think we'll I don't think we're going to keep seeing that forever. We just had that Disney yeah. thing with the shareholder. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the shareholders are like, you know what the problem is? Not enough white men. Okay, that's what's messing the movies up. Why do why we start doing movies with other people? And and and, and I'm like, bro, that sentiment. Why do we, movies have to have all women in them? Right, I don't that, understand. That sentiment. Why did this become so DEI's me? Right? <laughs> sorry. 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 I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Well, well, Disney. What, but what's crazy is because I you see that on Twitter, you see that in YouTube comment, and you go, "That guy's a loser. Yeah. He lives in a basement." Yeah. Th- mm-hmm. This was like shareholders. This is a guy trying to like yeah. take over the creative direction of Disney. Now he got his ass whooped. He lost. But once I, it made me appreciate Kevin Feige more because it's like you've been fighting against that the whole time. God damn! Yeah. Like, what? I mean, what he was the fuck is like happening? for a lot of this time. Right. There was a, I mean, there's a reason we ain't get ca- uh, Black Panther till 2018. Mm-hmm. Bruh, the yeah. big because uh, that dude didn't want. He said they wouldn't sell toys. We Captain Marvel would their sell biggest toys. grossing movie at the time, I believe, was was Black Panther for a while. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, you know, but y'all was gonna leave a billion dollar idea on the cutting room floor because you you just couldn't imagine people wanting to see yeah. black people. That's crazy uh, to me. Yeah. Oh, it's. It's it's really something to notice how, like, I think a lot of people who think they're very smart are like, well, you know, see, people care about money, so they'll greenlight whatever would make money. It's like, no, 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 no. I forget. I think it might have been Howard Bryan, actually, who said first of, like, Jackie Robinson did not get signed until he got signed because they thought he was bad. It's like, they were willing to lose games because they didn't want to sign him. It's like... I yeah. promoter yeah. would rather make less money than put a movie yep. out with a fully black cast. He just we exactly. would, and I think that that is the thing we take for granted. And it's so, like that's why, like, I don't think that representation solves problems, but I right. think it is an incredibly good barometer of where we are. And it is, mm. I think, very scary if we backslide in representation. I think that that says a lot about our. That's not nothing. That says a lot. Right. Yeah. 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 Couldn't agree. Couldn't agree more. Uh, listen, guys. I mean, Avengers Endgame, obviously, so special. It was great. Uh, if you if you're a new fan of the show, go back to the original Endgame pod. Um, I think, yeah, I think Robin Lumberg and Michael Smith dropped by mm-hmm. that that for the for that one. Yeah, uh, all the way all the way back in 2019. So like, yeah, go back there. We did a lot of Endgame content back then. So check that out. And obviously, check this out. This was a lot of fun to relive five years later. I uh, want to thank our guest and friend, Rod, for joining us. Mm-hmm. Appreciate you, brother. Thank Where you for having me. follow you and find your work? Of course, as always. Yeah, yes. always. Yeah. And uh, you can find my work, uh, The Black Guy Who Tests My Podcast. I do it with my wife. Uh, we do it like four or five times a week. Um, <clears throat> and we also, if you're uh, interested in our, our nerdy takes, 
Uh, you go to the blackouttips.com slash premium. We have a show behind the paywall called The Nerd Off. Uh, I got to get y'all on The Nerd Off so we can nerd off together. And um, We'll be, happy, we'll be happy to be here. Yeah, I got y'all. And, I mean, and the place is a, my room. I don't know why I said that. Yeah, yeah well, time, time <laughs> in the internet as a place. But I definitely got to get y'all on just because uh, it's, you know, I love talking nerd stuff with y'all, man. It's I do not do this often. And I, I mean that sincerely as a compliment. Like, I... There's so many people that I would not want to talk to about stuff like this because it's just, <laughs> yeah. it just, they're that just, means a lot. yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, y'all know, y'all been on the internet. We just like, oh, what did I get myself into, guys? I, so, um, yeah. you guys are fun and I always have a great time. And, uh, and, and I wish I, I, uh, I do one of our spinoff shows on Thursday, which is why lately I haven't been able to be here on Thursday because right. my co host can't do any other day. But uh, I, at some point, I got to chop it up with y'all about X Men too, because that 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 joint, that Absolutely. joint go hard, dog. <laughs> we got to have a discussion. Uh, so yeah, man. For but sure. thank y'all for having me. And uh, you can follow me on social media. Best place for me is still uh, Twitter, because we never given Elon Musk uh, the satisfaction of calling anything else. Uh, and mm -hmm. it's Rodimus Prime. That's right. Uh, so just follow me there. Salute to you, brother. Jake Christie, where can we follow you, sir? Well, first of all, I got to say that Endgame, the Cuba Gooding Jr. movie, is on both Freebie and Peacock, if anyone wants to watch oh it. Oh, my God. But you can follow me at the Jake Christie <laughs> uh, and listen to my other podcast. Love it for a psych, uh, psych rewatch podcast. Awesome stuff. You can follow me on Twitter at Anthony Canton underscore three. Follow the show at MC University Pod. We've been continuing the X-Men 97 coverage, so look out for that. And, of course, patreon.com slash mcuniversitypod where you can get our bonus content. We're still doing the Mission Impossible series. This this month will be Ghost Protocol. And, of course, we got the subscriber mailbag. That's coming up soon. Uh, $3 to get in to the Discord. $8 Avengers level. And keep supporting. Of course, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And, and keep them numbers going up. And, of course, five star. Five star, five star, five star, both Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Appreciate everybody for supporting and listening for Rod and Jake. I'm Anthony Canton the third. This has been Marvel Cinematic University. We will talk to you next time. We love you 3000.